Today, we're going to talk about Chat Engine's REST APIs. So, in some situations, you might need to change data regarding Chat Engine. You might need to create a new chat, or you might need to delete an existing user, or change a chat's title, or send a message. In any of these situations where you need to create, update, read, or destroy data, you're going to need to use Chat Engine's REST APIs. And they're actually fully documented right here at the bottom. You get brought to a Postman collection that we have created and documented for you. And a little trick, every Chat Engine experience that we build is powered by these APIs under the hood. So you should be able to do absolutely anything using these APIs right here. One little thing to note as well is that there are private APIs and there are public APIs. Public APIs are things that any user should be able to do like send a message. You should be able to do this on the client side. Everybody should have access to these APIs. Then there are private APIs. These are things that only you should be able to do, like create new users, delete users, change passwords, get the private key of your project. These are things that only your server should be able to do and are hence restricted with a private API. So why don't we start with a private API example and then we'll go to a public API example. The first one is, let's say you want to create a bunch of users. It's a very common situation that your app might have, you know, 100 existing users and you want to start using Chat Engine and you need to get all these users on Chat Engine so they can talk with one another. In this situation, you would realistically want to make a script that uses this private API, gets all the user data you want and creates a user for each person in your database. So I actually made an example script right here. We have a list of users. So you can see the first name, last name, username, secret, email, and some specific data to them. This can be whatever you want, so long as it's in a JSON format. We go through this list, and you can see that there are like half a dozen users, and we should create a user object for each one in Chat Engine. All I did was write like a 14-line Python script. All we do is we load all this data into a users array. We iterate through it, and for each user, we use the post request to create a Chat Engine user for them. So if we run this script, what you'll see is that this project will go from having zero users to about five or six users. So let's run the script right now. 201 means that the object was created, which is good. So if we go back and click refresh, Oh, voila, you see that five users now appear. So this is using the private API with our private key, which can create, read, update, and destroy other users. Of course, I'm going to delete this afterwards, so it doesn't matter that you see it. Now, let's think about the public API. Sometimes users need to send messages or delete their messages or change their chat or add members to their chat. All of these actions are powered by a public API. So in this cool example here, what I did is I created a support button where users can type in their email. Once a user types in their email, it will either get an existing chat under that email address or create a new one for scratch from them. So if we do, you know, one, two, three at me.com and click enter, a new chat pops up and we can say, hey, it's one, two, three. If we refresh this page and do one, two, three at me.com, you see that it actually gets the existing chat and we can continue populating this existing chat here. So how do we do that? If you actually go through our public documentation for APIs, we have something called a get or create chat. So if we go to my chats, get or create, what this will do is using this data, it will either get an existing chat that matches all this criteria or create a new one from scratch. It's actually one of our most popular APIs because that logic is very powerful. So what we do under the hood is we're going to make a continuation of that support chat example where before it was just a hard-coded chat with a chat socket and a chat feed. But now what we did is we created an email collection form right here that basically takes the email, doesn't really matter, but the important part is under the hood, once we get that email, is that we use the getter create chat API with this title and with direct, ch direct chat set to true. And then depending on whether or not we find this chat, we either create a new one 
or we get the existing one. And this would be an example of a public API. Anybody that has a Chat Engine account should be able to do it. So it's publicly documented for anybody to use. So we covered a lot. So why don't I just try and wrap it up in a nutshell? All of the functionality that Chat Engine uses is powered by these APIs, which you can get direct access to yourself. There are private APIs, which only your server should be able to do, like edit users and delete them. And then there are also public APIs, like people should be able to send their own messages and delete their own messages. This will show you exactly how to implement both types of APIs. And ideally, that user migration example and getter create chat example shows you how you can use both in whatever context you need. So I hope you enjoyed that.